I'm here representing the Lulu International Group, dealing across several countries, and I'm proud to be representing it for across 109 retail outlets with a vast expansion across what I mentioned of 24 countries with its diversity in its merchandises and also in the diversity of dealing with several countries' norms and regulations. As most of you might be knowing about the Lulu Group, which actually caters to wide variety of you know, requirements across all nations and have always been addressing or actually meeting the requirements with maximum effort from each and every one of the people working for the Lulu International Group. And let me tell you that we have been exercising several innovations and also enhancements to make sure that system level we have maximum accuracy and bring in maximum, uh, what do you call, supremacy in dealing with all the merchandises that we work for, be it the food, be it the non-food, also white goods, say, heavy duty goods, carrying out 100% accuracy levels in our inventory, also for the home delivery, and also several other enhancements where customers across the globe can ac access our web stores and also get details about each and every product that we deal with. As I mentioned, we have a total re retail space across these countries of 25, 22.5 million square feet. Having a vast retail space also increases our responsibility to bring in maximum usage of this retail space in the best possible way. And how do we do that? It's not by just having over 30,000 employees, but how to make use of them effectively with the latest enhancements is what we are looking forward to. And that's what I would like to share with you people today. To share with you what we have been exercising in our outlets, in our distribution centers. And giving the knowledge transfer, the best possible knowledge transfer to the people who we recruit. So that 24 by 7, 365, we have the best solutions in place. Retail change across our organizational entities makes 83%. Having shopping malls to 3%. Wholesale distribution, as you can see, 5 followed by food processing is just 4%. Travels, hospitality, logistics to 0.5, exports. The import and general trading, sourcing to 1 and 4% respectively. In order to integrate with our retail operations, supply chain plays a key factor, plays an important role. And what all have we implemented to bring in the supply chain, to bring in a supremacy level in the supply chain activities, is what, again, I'm going to share with you people. As most of you might be aware that we have implemented SAP, the ERP solution, the leading ERP solution SAP, and that has given us a boost in several of the retail operations that we have, several modules of the retail operations that we have. We have flagship banners across 10 countries. Emirates General Market, more known as EGM to the local people, Alfla Plaza, EMK Supermarket, and the Lulu Center. Lulu Center is our department store section. And MK Supermarket, as the name suggests, deals with the supermarkets items. Certifications and awards have been always <laughs> our dream, and uh, we have been uh, actually, you know, looking forward to implementing what I mentioned, more enhancements to bring in supremacy levels in our organizational entities as well as our workflows. And we have been certified with the ISO 9001, 14001, 22000. We have also been awarded with the Dubai Quality Appreciation Program with the Best Retail Company Award and Best Consumer-Friendly Hypermarket. 
many more. The supply chain activities. The supply chain activities have to, you know, be organized in such a way that we should be able to cater in such a manner that we do not have any glitches. The word glitch I use is because it, it's, it's not just a glitch that happens. There could be like um, uh, what we all know that there could be a heavy loss for us if our supply chain is not in the proper manner which is implemented. Say for example, we have trucks coming in to our organizational DC distribution centers and if it is not catered to a level wherein we can accept the goods, dock them and store them according to their nature of activities, be it foot and on foot, we have a heavy loss then and there. So how do we, how do we, how do we actually look into a solution wherein we can cater to different kind of products in our supply chain? We do have distribution centers across the countries and a total area of 7.5 million square feet caters to our distribution centers alone. 26% of this space is just accounted by the distribution centers back in Abu Dhabi, situated at Mustafa. This is our distribution center layout plan, wherein we have different kinds of storage types. And these storage types are linked with our activities which we have actually implemented. Say, for example, receiving. How quickly can you receive a process? How quickly can this particular item be docked into our stations? A process. How quickly can you actually pick these items from the storage locations? A process. And how quickly can this be dispatched to these particular our outlets from where customers can actually access these goods? A process. All these processes are actually seamlessly implemented whereby manual um, uh, labor is reduced to a great extent, thereby increasing accuracy. We make use of pallets, crates, cartons, pieces for various different merchandises such as fresh and frozen foods, textiles and other departments, store merchandise. I'll be showing in the following sl uh, slides what exactly are these particular storage types. You know, for a particular merchandise of say textiles, you might not be using, you know, these floor rack type of uh, shelving. For food, they do have their own shelving methodologies. How easily can you access food? What are the vehicles to be driven inside the distribution centers to access food, to access textile items? Semi-heavy shelving, strong room, etc. multi-tire shelving, floor racks. Just imagine on-time replenishment of stock from the fourth level of the rack to ground level for instant picking related activities. Instant replenishment. I'll just talk about that process once I finish the storage types. These are the um, full, um, you, can see, you can see that, you can see that these numbers mentioned here, they are all identifiers which are linked into the system and the merchandises in that particular bin. So each and every item, there, each, for each and every item, when a request is placed, the system automatically suggests that don't wander around the huge space of the DC. No, you have to go to this particular location. You have to pick the goods. And if there is no goods in that bin, initiate or trigger the automatic replenishment process. So by the time the picker goes from the receiving area where he has received the stock order, by the time he reaches the bin, automatic replenishment has already you know, filled in the particular goods in that particular location, if it was empty or if it was insufficient. So we make use of that time, or else in the conventional method, the picker goes to the location, sees there's no stock, he has to go to the back store or the other locations where the goods are docked. Bring that again. We save that time because of this automatic replenishment process from the different locations. These are flow rack items which you can see here, which actually docks in 
uh, merchandises with, with that particular volume, with that particular length, breadth, and uh, height, and weight. This is what I was talking about. Give you a small, uh, what do you call, a, a, a glance to the operational activities that we actually carry out. A, a, just a small a snippet, you can call, of the activities that's coming out. The entire enterprise is organized in such a way in the ERP solution that each and every country is able to request to its local distribution center or even to distribution centers outside the country if there is a, a, a reduction in stock levels or insufficient stock levels. So what is the process which actually happens? We are actually looking into real time or just in time stock acceptance from the vendor whereby we have a, rep wherein we have a replenishment activity which goes on. Say, for example, you have a, we had a fair glimpse of what exactly the DC looks like. You have different merchandises in different um, storage types. Every single location that I have mentioned here is seamlessly as transparent as it is. You look into the physical location mentioned in the system. So you want to know the particular location wherein you have a particular food item or a detergent that you're looking for or a particular textile item with a brand that you know. You enter it into the system and you get to know exactly where that location is. Now, stock levels of these particular items in the system, real time, each and every time you have a reduction in these stock levels. There is reorder point, there is safety stock levels, there is target stock levels. Formulations have been set in place with maximum fine tuning that when the stock levels go below your reorder point. We get to know that that's the alert. You are going below a level wherein you need to order now. If you do not order now, you will not be able to meet your customer's requirements. Order shoots up. An automatic replenishment process creates purchase orders. These purchase orders are created in an automated way according to the authorization levels for the respective buyers of that category. Now just imagine daily buyers coming and sitting and raising purchase orders. They need to look into all the stock levels. They need to look into all the items. They need to look into the new items, the price changes. Now are the physical location stock values similar, same to that of the system? These correction related activities takes a huge amount of labor, huge amount of time, and that too results in last minute, you know, running here and there. Instead of that, in the morning, when they come at 8 o'clock, they are presented with purchase orders created by the system. All they need to do is monitor them, release them. The releasing procedure of these purchase orders triggers a communication to the vendor whose details have been already collected in the system. A mail is being shot, a fax has been sent, hard copy printouts are generated. Instantly, the vendor gets to know that we are in requirement of goods. According to the, according to the deal with the vendor, we know that his lead time is so and so. Basically, in, in connection to this lead time, we have corrected our reorder levels, safety stock levels. So this process actually happens and the auto, or the auto replenishment process makes sure that the purchase orders are raised well in time and the vendors according to the lead, lead times bring in stock so that we can supply to our customers in time. This, this activities make sure that we give maximum uh, clarity to the customers, we give maximum, what do you call, fresh uh, goods to the customers if you're talking about food lines. Also, we have provisions wherein we do make sure that the vendor can directly go and give goods to the suppliers. I'm mean, sorry, the, uh, our particular customers, wherein we have initiated that process in the home delivery. A lot of innovations have been incorporated. I'll just speak about one more innovation that we have taken into the um, um, warehouse management system. We have brought in voice picking, method, voice picking activities such as, you know, training the particular voice calibration against the particular devices that you have. 
There is no more paper-related activities. You have the order in your place. Anybody, any person who understands his native language can help us out, can help particular uh, the, the process to ease up. Say, for example, there is uh, a, a person from, say, um, what do you call it? Nepal who doesn't understand English, who is not well into Arabic. His na native language is Nepalese, say, for example. He's got a training session with the system that he has wherein he can communicate with certain exercises into the device that he has, system understands his language. Whereby, next time he gets an order, he knows that where to go, which bin to go, what to take, how to replenishment, which is being told to him in his native language. There is no, there is no communication uh, you know, lag happening there, whereby our particular person is, is, is as free as in his home to go and pick an item and come back to this particular bay where you can dispatch it. Our voice picking, our RFIDs, our mobile particular um, uh, devices which can be taken across to different locations to speed up the activities. What we, what we actually gain is, you know, by these system guided processes, the uh, zero paper use, all the processes are fine-tuned with the document line item level integration with SAP ERP and other subsystems like we're using for the WMS uh, solution. We have taken the LFS solution from E plus P. Beyond labor efficiencies, the key processes that we have improved is our first in, first out, which happens uh, the first uh, as, the, as the particular formula goes and what comes in first goes out uh, first and also has an overriding factor based on the best before date. Across docking, it necessarily need not go to the shelves. It can directly go to the customer at the time of receiving itself. A voice picking, our automatic pick replenishment, RF picking, lot tracking, automatic data collection. Automatic data collection is that each and every time a particular item comes in, it's tracked completely in the system. Where is it? When has it come in? When has it last gone? What is its substitute? What is its volume? In which pallet can you size it out? Everything. Automation accuracies have been increased with the help of put-away proposals. The best before date history check, of course, that is very important. Automated material handling equipment, order processing with special tools such as order grouping and splitting. Like when you receive an order, it might be uh, an order which comprises of uh, merchandises across different sectors. But what we do is this particular order is split up in our system to separate sections so that this section contains only a particular part of the warehouse. So the person picking up that particular order can go to just that section. The other section can go to the other way so that we save time there instead of the person running around the warehouse. A supply chain, you can see that the blue boxes are completely integrated within the SAP system. And the green ones deal in the WMS solution that is LFS 400. Our center, our, across Across these countries, we have a centralized database, which is the key factor for us so that anybody, any particular buyer traveling across can access in his particular mobile device or in his system and can release purchase orders, can raise requests. Our systems are fully barcode controlled, which gives us more strength, more uh, integration. The goods receipt, the integration between the SAP and the third party system is by IDOX. SAP has, uh, has the capability to communicate, to interact with third party systems, certify third party systems with the help of IDOX, which is interface documents which contain data which goes out of SAP in a format that SAP understands and its certified partners understand. And also, these softwares can send back data to SAP, which SAP understands and can translate it to the transactional data. I know, I know. I'm sorry that there was a lot of uh, stuff that I had intended to cover, but then a lack of time. I mean, there's lots of good information here. Uh, some of you have similar uh, systems and, and processes in your organizations. Some of you don't. Um, by all means, uh, we thank Lulu Group for making this information available to us. And again, uh, Tina will uh, circulate an email to all the attendees with a link, and you can download any presentations you wish. So, uh, which is great because not every conference will do that and uh, thanks Tina for arranging that. I'm sure everybody's agreed to do that. 
So, uh, if you wouldn't mind. I think I just, uh, two more slides. I'll just wrap okay, it up as soon as possible. Slides, 30 seconds. Thank you for the time, extra time. Uh, see, this is the training documents, training videos, or training methodologies that we have adopted for the newcomers, or the people who are not much to that level that we have expected. You see that the choose the language option. We have languages into which we have already you know, integrated the uh, documentation levels, the guidelines, the videos, which actually gives him an exercise to actually interact with the system and get to know more about what to do, what is expected out of him, than we tell them. Once he chooses his language, we have what options do you want to learn? You want to learn as a paper picker? Fine, fine, go. Or a palette picking? Fine, go. Uh, you want to learn about the goods receiving part? Click on that. And then you have the voice picking part where you can train yourself. So this training module is also integrated into our system. So any point of time, we don't need to, we don't need to actually arrange training sessions. Any point of time it is available to him so that he can train whenever he wants. You don't need to arrange a huge session um, comprising of 20 people to train them. That could just shoot up their saturation levels of understanding. These are the achievements that we have, which I've already spoken to you. Any more clarifications that you will have, of course, can be addressed to Mr. Madhav at ae.lulumia.com, who is the CIO of Lulu International Group. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it today because, like, uh, uh, he has already explained that he had some official events which he had to attend to. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, from the Lulu International Group. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Cheers.